Hey everyone, and welcome to Top Think. Today, we're going to learn about 7 proven steps to mastering your emotions. Now, let's begin. Number 1. Umbrella Emotions People who struggle to control their emotions are often guilty of the same bad habit. You experience dozens if not hundreds of unique emotions on a daily basis. Each one combines personality, context, and experience to create a mental state that's unique to you as an individual. Now, despite our incredible emotional diversity, many people group their feelings into a few simplistic categories. These umbrella emotions cancel out the important quirks of each individual feeling. For example, you might say, I feel bad, to describe just about any negative emotion. But think about all the different emotions that are summed up by the word bad. In this one umbrella category, you've got everything from disappointment to sadness to apathy. Yep, they're all negative, but that's pretty much the only thing that they have in common. They're triggered by different events. They're prevented or resolved in their own unique ways. Each individual word can even be broken down further into dozens of more specific feelings. Sadness could mean you're lonely, but you could just as easily be sad about a missed opportunity or the loss of a loved one. When you use umbrella emotions, you're neglecting the real problem. It's nearly impossible to figure out what's wrong because you don't know how you're feeling about it. Well, here, let's say you feel bad when you don't get a promotion at work. You assume you're just upset because you weren't chosen for the position. But weeks go by and those negative emotions won't leave you alone. So you dedicate tons of time and effort to ensure that you're picked for the next promotion. And when that day comes, you end up getting the job only to realize that you're feeling just as sad as you were before. If you had put away your umbrella, you would have noticed that you weren't sad about the missed promotion at all you were feeling unfulfilled in your career. So, instead of dedicating all that time towards your current job, you should have been looking for something that would have made you happy. Now, this sounds simple, sure, but most people can't wrap their heads around their emotions. It's much easier for them to group their feelings into four or five different categories, but their brains are so much more complex than that. If you want to master your emotions, then take the time to identify these three things. What are you feeling? Where does it come from? And why are you feeling it? This simple step will award you more emotional intelligence than the vast majority of people in the world today. Number 2. Positive Rumination A single negative event can overshadow a week's worth of positivity. After something bad happens, you might feel this lingering sense of negativity. Whether it's guilt or embarrassment, that negativity infects almost everything that you do afterwards. Even the things that you love won't feel nearly as fun, because you can't get that negative experience out of your head. So how do we pay less attention to the bad and more attention to the good? Well, a 2003 study challenged two groups of participants to keep daily records of their behaviors and experiences. One group paid special attention to the positives, while another focused on the negatives. After weeks of keeping detailed records, researchers measured the well-being of each participant. They discovered that writing down positive experiences has the most significant impact on your mood. Because participants were more conscious of the good, they spent less time worrying about the bad. So, if you're falling down an emotional hole, then start keeping records of the positive things in your life. If you're consistent, you can stabilize your mental state in no time. Number 3. Challenging Patterns If you're learning how to draw, which is a better way to start? Should you only draw one thing? Or should you practice drawing hundreds of things? Hmm. Repetition does have its place, but expanding your arsenal will give you more experience and flexibility. When it comes to your emotions, many people lack the perspective to overcome challenges. They stick to the same patterns, places, and routines for their entire lives. While this offers safety and organization, it narrows your view of yourself. It really deprives you of the experience you need to gain that perspective. You'll struggle to honestly reflect on who you are because 
you've never faced anything that you're not comfortable with. To build your emotional intelligence, you need to force yourself out of your comfort zone. Travel somewhere new, commit yourself to a job or hobby that scares you, interact with a community that's different from the one you know. These new experiences will improve your emotional health by giving you a better understanding of who you are. Number 4. Natural Immersion Sometimes, a casual stroll outside is all that you need to control your emotions. A 2016 study found that walking is one of the most effective ways to stabilize your mood. Just like how exercise lifts your spirits, physical movement decreases stress by neutralizing sporadic neural activity. In other words, when your brain is drowning in negativity, a short walk can pull you to safety. That same study found that walking is especially useful for diminishing boredom and fear. If you're not careful, these two negative emotions can consume your life. The more you pay attention to them, the worse they get. Boredom turns into hopelessness and low self-esteem. Fear quickly transforms into frustration and anxiety. Before you know it, your goals, habits, and relationships start to suffer. When you're stuck in this negative headspace, it feels like you need something major to claw your way to freedom. But the truth is, little activities like walking can completely shift your mentality. This technique becomes even more therapeutic when done in the right context. So instead of walking through your house or around your neighborhood, try to immerse yourself in nature. Walk through a green belt or go on a hike. Replace work and technology with trees, water, and natural beauty. Placing yourself in this new context will improve your mood and unravel mental stress. Your brain often decides its base mental state by taking cues from the surrounding environment. Just think about how productive you are at your desk at work versus your bed at home. If you're like most people, sitting in your bed makes you lazy and lethargic. But it's not because you're any more tired than normal. Your brain simply associates your bed with relaxing activities. Your desk at work, on the other hand, puts your brain in a more productive environment which unconsciously changes your behavior. Context moderates your emotions in the exact same way. A change in scenery might be all that you need to get your feelings under control. Natural settings work wonders on suffocating emotions like anger and doubt. So if you find yourself losing your temper, nature gives you a place to relax and to let off steam. When you have to make an important decision, a walk through the wild helps you see more clearly. Your emotions will give way to rational thought and creative problem solving. By the end of your walk, that initial problem may not even bother you anymore. So don't waste any more time feeling stressed and helpless. A little activity and a change in context will help you regain control of your emotions. Number 5. Expanding Vocabulary How does your vocabulary affect your emotions? Well, believe it or not, learning new words helps you identify specific feelings. It's much easier for you to conceptualize each emotion when you know the right word to pair with it. Expanding your emotional vocabulary helps distinguish between similar feelings. Just take these two emotions, annoyance and frustration. On the surface, well, they sound exactly the same, but they're not. Annoyance requires an object. You're annoyed by someone's loud music. You're annoyed with your younger sibling. Frustration, on the other hand, comes from your inability to achieve a goal. For example, you might be frustrated that you can't finish a presentation. Learning as little as one new word a day can transform the way that you analyze your feelings. Number 6. Emotional Resilience To master your emotions, you have to recover from mental setbacks. Psychologists call this emotional resilience. People who haven't developed resilience struggle to bounce back after any kind of failure. When something goes wrong, they're overwhelmed by negative emotions. It gets to the point where they start losing control. If you're not careful, this can lead to aggression, risky behavior, and substance abuse. It also cripples motivation and productivity, bringing your goals to a standstill. So, how do you develop emotional resilience? 
practicing mindfulness like writing down positive experience is one strategy. Another is to start doing cognitive reappraisal training. This means learning to reinterpret the stressful stimuli in your life. It'll teach you how to react, cope, and learn in a healthy and productive way. Emotional resilience is a skill that you'll need for the rest of your life. So don't wait to start reinterpreting your mistakes. Number 7. People watching. To the untrained eye, people watching is just something that you do when you're bored, but it actually improves your social intuition. Social intuition is how you understand other people's emotions. For example, when you notice your friend's eyebrows are angled downward, your social intuition tells you that your friend is angry. People watching teaches you to read complex emotions through body language. You learn what signals to look for. You hone in on the most informative parts of the body, like the mouth and the hands. You can even try to predict what they'll do next. And the more you practice, the better you'll get. So how does this help you actually master your own emotions? When you identify them in other people, you learn to recognize those emotions in yourself. You also get a boost in emotional expression. You learn to communicate through your words, faces, and other forms of body language. As simple as it sounds, people watching will enhance your emotional intelligence inside and out. Hey, thank you for watching Top Think, and be sure to subscribe because more incredible content is on the way.